Mr. Wilson, what is your answer to the charge that you are being dishonest in opposing Britain's entry into the common market on the present terms? Because if you had still been Prime Minister, you would have recommended the same terms wholeheartedly. Well, if that's a charge of dishonesty, it's based on something that's not true. I would not have recommended the terms. I regard the terms as unsatisfactory, inadequate, and indeed, in certain respects, crippling for Britain. I always said, and uh, I'm on the record very, very many times about this, that I saw great advantage in joining the market on the right terms, economic advantages, political advantages, but the terms must be right. The terms, in my view, are not right, and throughout I made it clear it would depend on the terms. Well, it's very difficult for the ordinary person to make up their mind who to believe in this, because Lord George Brown, who was your foreign secretary at the time, says it would have been a point of honour to accept these terms if you'd still been in government. Well, of course, we all know George, and I think the country will be poorer without him. But he said this, this is his personal view, I don't mind that. He didn't take the trouble, I think, to reply to what I said in the House when I said categorically the basis on which the Labour government applied. Indeed, I quoted the recommendation which George and I put to Cabinet, New Zealand, for example, there must be uh, either a permanent arrangement to allow cheap New Zealand food to come into Britain, or if there was to be a transition, it must last for a generation. So that, wait, now, wait a minute. That was signed by George and myself, and the Cabinet applied on that basis. I quoted everything he said in Europe, always on those terms, to all the six when we had toured Europe before that. But uh, if uh, people find it difficult to understand, perhaps that's because we have not seen quoted in the past uh, few weeks anything except selective quotations, not the quotations where I said it all depends on the terms. And so it does. But it is not just uh, Lord George Brown himself. Um, your other two foreign secretaries, Mr. Michael Stewart and Mr. Gordon Walker, said the terms would have been acceptable. Your negotiator, Mr. George Thompson, said the terms would have been acceptable. Mr. Roy Jenkins, who you made Chancellor of the Exchequer, said he thought the terms would be acceptable to a majority of the Labour cabinet. Yes, well, first of all, Mr. Patrick Gordon Walker is a very sincere European. I honour and respect uh, the sincerity of all the people who take a view different from myself. He was not in the cabinet uh, as foreign secretary during this period at all. He was in the cabinet in another capacity. Uh, when I hear you say that George Thompson is our negotiator, of course we didn't negotiate. There was a change of government before the negotiations began. But uh, this idea that uh, I'm the only one out of step just really does uh, not stand um, investigation. I know for a fact, and I have stated this, though it has not been accepted by most of the pro-market or conservative press, that the Cabinet would not have accepted these terms. Indeed, six members of the Cabinet, in a position to know, have just set their signature to a statement that they would never have accepted the terms, and there were others. But how could so many I, mean, I, I think probably I'm in as good a position as anyone to know what the Cabinet would have done with these terms. And the fact that two or three say that from their point of view they would accept it does not mean the Cabinet would. But is it a fault in 